Christian Bowman here from fashionscene.com.au. Today I am here with a very special guest and this man has done what only few other designers have done in Australia in the fashion scene and that is win three NRA Supreme Fashion Awards. Now Brad has um, done that um, just recently on Wednesday night at the 28th NRA um, AMP Capital event. Um, AMP Capital Shopping Centres and um, Brad took away the Supreme Award for a third time. Now, um, welcome Brad. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, how, how was your night on, on Wednesday night? Yeah, no, it was a good night. So it was sort of um, certainly been uh, something been aiming for for a long time to get that sort of recognition, but no, it was a good night in the end. Right. Now, this is obviously this is not the first time that you've been to the NRA Fashion Awards, but tell me about the first time that you actually won something in, in 1997, which is 12 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, now that was, I guess probably that was um, even more of a highlight because it had been a few years trying to win the very first award, and so um, when you finally get to achieve something like that, it's sort of a real breakthrough. So yeah. Um, Probably similar Wednesday to that first one, but in a different way. Yeah, sure. Um, now, you've won the Supreme Award um, three times now, and the first time was in 05? Yes. Yes. Um, and then again in 06, and now in um, 2009. Now, you had won the award for um, your bridal mm -hmm. gown, um, which was a, a Dior um, inspired 1950s. Um, elegant gown, um, as I've put it here, and it was um, made with French lace, uh, silk tulle, and there was a ribbon on the bodice, and I was speaking to Brad as I was doing this interview, and it's pronounced bodice, not bodice, as I was going to call it, so. <laughs> now, tell me about um, that particular gown that you won the award for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was, um, it, it was something that I, I did draw inspiration from, sort of that classic Dior look in the 50s, um, just very elegant. Um, what I've done with it is a lot of layering and texturing. So the skirt is made up, it has a silk organza, and then it has a beautiful French lace um, that we've imported ourselves, overlaid to the organza, and then over that we've got the silk tulle. So the skirt, your first impression is the soft floaty silk tulle, but then when you look a little closer you see the impression of the the lace coming through so it's quite delicate and soft rather than being sort of severe and then it's got the drama of the satin bow through the waist and then it's got all the silk organza ribbon loops through the bust area giving a, a balance to the soft skirt and how long did it take for you to to make well to design and then make well probably been starting on the work of the designing and that since about october last year because you you get the original concept and then you've got to start sourcing fabrics and things and and changing them around to get the right look that you're after and then um, we started the making of it um, around about a month ago working on it in between clients and things like that right. and um, having been a winner in the past how has um, the NRA Fashion Awards affected your business mm -hmm. yeah well, it really does um, promote your business because the the exposure from the awards is something that you can't generally achieve by yourself and then it also gives your label a certain credibility to customers that are out in the marketplace you know They're, so when they come across you you're not um, an unknown they they remember you from the fashion awards and it, then it sort of you know it reinforces that and that you're um, reliable and, and quality work and things like that so um, the exposure really does promote your business. Now, the future of fashion, what's your thoughts on the future of fashion in Australia? After what you've seen at the recent awards at, at NRA? Um, oh, I think the future of Australian fashion is strong. I think Australian fashion definitely has its own look. Um, if you're comparing to, to looks that you can see around the world and even in Europe, I think we, we compete on an equal footing. Um, maybe it's our lifestyle and things like that that gives us the edge but I mean it's just to see um, the likes of lots of international labels that we have that are Australian based yep. that are successful overseas um, I think the Australian fashion industry is pretty strong um, 
probably the manufacturing is a little harder just because of the, the lack of skills that we have here in that department. Um, so unfortunately certain things are going offshore, not in my case. Um, but I can see that it is hard to have a totally Australian produced product because of what we have out there sure. to work with, you know. Yeah. Um, now with um, a, a lot of our audience, we've got a lot of um, student designers um, who um, frequent our website. Um, what are some of your thoughts on, on some of the upcoming fashion that you've seen at the, the recent awards? And um, I think this time was the first time that I think it went national. Um, where we had um, a winner from uh, Victoria at RMIT. Um, what did you think of um, her particular entry and then some of the other designs that you saw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the student entries were particularly strong this year. Um, in past years, um, they've been quite different. Um, slowly, I guess, they've been growing and getting stronger, but like this year they were particularly strong and, and creative and well-made still. Um, previously, student entries have been um, more like pieces of artwork and things like that and not necessarily put together in a particularly good manner yeah. whereas this year it just looked like you know creative clothing that you could find in the marketplace anyway you know so it was very strong in that category um, in that area um, but the designs were really good there were about three standout entries from what we'd seen there and I know it was very strong there were hundreds of entries to begin yeah. with anyway you know but no I think the student category is very strong yeah oh, that's great now, just to, just before we sort of wrap up um, uh, I, I think a lot of our viewers would love to find out more about um, you as as a designer and um, and not so much your personal life but things that you um, that you do as a person um, that that you might find that's a little bit either eccentric or that makes you different to a lot of other designers? Is there something unique in, in Brad Webb's life that, um, you know, it might be uh, you break some fashion rules and sometimes that means that you can do things differently? Um, uh, maybe something that's a little different is that I'm extremely fussy, I suppose, and perhaps that sort of then leads to my attention to detail, you know, so that sort of is something that's really important to me and a love of beautiful quality things and so perhaps that I'm a little bit um, obsessive about things like that might be a point of difference that leads and reflects itself in my work. How long have you been in fashion for? Uh, about 14 years now, 15 years, something like that. And how did you get into it? I just started when I was young, just used to be mucking around and doing some sewing when mum was sewing and things like that and you do more and more of it and yeah. Does your mum play a big role in your business? Yes, so she's involved with mother and father involved in the business so she's mainly manning the shop, dad's up in the workroom doing bits and pieces and um, yeah, so it's a family business. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Brad, for um, your time, and I um, appreciate you taking your time, especially on Easter weekend. Um, I'm Christian Bowman. I'm here with Brad Webb from um, Dar Bridal Couture. How can people find out more about your, um, your business? Um, well, we're in, located in the Brisbane Arcade in the city in Brisbane, and we've also got our website, darbridalcouture.com.au. There's information there about us and how to get hold of us. Check it out, guys. I'm Christian Bowman. Thanks for joining me.